She's yours. Uh, well, like he said, uh, my name is Lee Lawson. Um, it took a while for me to get up here. Even though we go down to the prison ministry, I've spoken in front of a few, but I pretty much know a lot of you because I've been here, I think, October was City Fest in 2019, and Gordon Figueroa is the one who invited me here. That Acts 17, 26, where it says um, he appoints the powers and authorities and even predetermines our boundaries of habitat. Well, that's what I felt when I stepped here on this place the first time. I guess the best place to start would be back when I was born. I was born in El Dorado, Arkansas. My dad was Air Force. Uh, we was up and down the east and west coast. Uh, he had two. I, I was three. I had a sister that was two and another sister that was one. And we were in Los Angeles. And my dad, a full-fledged alcoholic uh, in the Air Force, drag racing, bumped another guy. And the guy got killed in an accident and he got charged with vehicular manslaughter. Uh, he had to go do two years in LA County lockup. My mom, I remember the train ride from California back to Arkansas. Uh, she got strung out on heroin. So uh, CPS come and got us, what they call CPS nowadays, but we was in foster homes for two years until my dad got out. He got out and got a babysitter to watch us when we were growing up. and. He ended up marrying her and having three more kids with them. And uh, we never really had a stable home. And my dad, like I said, was a full-blown alcoholic. My mother, a heroin addict. So we, we moved around a lot. Uh, I remember between the first and second, third grade, probably eight to 10 different homes. And then from the third grade till, say, the eighth grade, we stayed in three different homes, but they were all right in the same area. And I learned about Jesus back then, and me and my two sisters would get in front of the church and sing, believe it or not, and uh, had a little bit of taste of it, said the prayer. No, this, this, was, uh, this, this was back when I didn't care what I said. We just sang. But... Uh, my story is pretty much, uh, I think I had to go through all the hard stuff to appreciate the good stuff. And um, I started drinking at the age of 15, smoking weed. Um, got a lot of trouble going on because I was in trouble with the law. I was in the sixth grade and on probation. I started out early. Uh, at the age of 16, I tried to commit suicide. I didn't tell anybody. I just took a whole bunch of, my dad had high blood pressure and I took all of his pills. I woke up three days later from a coma. And uh, I think back now, you know, my son, my daughters, my grandchildren, none of them would have been here had I succeeded. So I think about all the times I've done craziness and how I made it through car wrecks. Uh, my, one of my main wrecks, I hit the back of a car that was sitting still, she was texting. I'm on my motorcycle. BTX 1300, smacked the back over at 45 miles an hour. I got up. Of course, I was high. Uh, ended up getting, I went to prison. I, I skipped the married part. That's, that's, I got divorced after 11 years of marriage. Had three kids who, one of them's in prison right now. But I ended up getting 11 DWIs. I've been to prison three times. Uh, due to the lifestyle that comes with drug addiction, meth addict, smoking weed. You know the lifestyle. I mean, you just don't care about nobody. You don't even care about yourself. You just care about your next high. And that's all you care about. There's no love in you. And, uh, well, on my last prison run, I would go to hear about Jesus, and all these different preachers would come in. You'd have, you know how the jail system is, you have Jehovah Witness, you got Pentecost, you got Assembly of God, Presbyterian, all different kinds of flavors, and each one had a different tale about it. And I, I said, the heck with this, I want to know the truth. So I started looking for it, and I found it. I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, 
and Romans all the way up to chapter 7 where Paul starts talking about uh, that what I want to do, I don't do. And I related to that. But a lot of the guys were saying, that's how you live as a Christian, but you just pray every day for forgiveness. And I'm like, well, what's the difference then? You know, if you're going to be doing that. But uh, I got to that point, and I got hung up on reading. I couldn't read no more. It, it just bothered me. How can I ever uh, get away from that old wretched man that I am? Who will save me from this body of death? That's verse 24. And then 25 says, I thank God through Christ Jesus. And But I didn't know that part. And I only read it with the natural eyes. I found out there's a spiritual eyes to read the Bible with and a natural eyes to read the Bible with. And until I got the spirit, I couldn't really understand it. I made heads and tails with the connections of stuff. But when I was praying about that, Romans 7, uh, 24, I thought, what, what do I do? I had gone to breakfast that morning, came back, kicked back in my rack. It's hard to believe it, but I went through a spiritual experience. I uh, was caught up, and as I was rising, I could see demons and devils in windows and doors. And I remember as I'm watching their eyes fade, I'm starting to turn, and I said inside my heart, I'm so glad I believed. And I kept rising and rising, and I went through this darkness. And then I seen that light up above and got to the light. It touched me, and I sparkled back down to earth or in prison. I was mad because I thought it was the end. I know it's hard to believe, but I went through that. But I told him at that time, Lord, because you get what they call jailhouse religion. They say anybody can get in jail and quit doing drugs and, you know, you're going to quit doing this, you're going to quit doing that, but the test is when you get out. Well, sometimes you be careful what you pray for because I told the Lord, I don't want to quit in here. And uh, I got out on parole. My last unit was in Arkansas, and it was a warrior unit. Lifers there, they didn't care about people like me who had short time. You were their enemy. In fact, they want you to screw up so they can beat you down. They killed one female guard right before I got out over a pair of Nike tennis shoes. I got out, and I was out six or seven months on parole, and I had a hot pee test. And somehow or another, they didn't revoke my parole. Okay, then I got a, a DWI while on parole but it was a misdemeanor because it was in Arkansas and they didn't revoke me. But I had to go through these classes. And while I was in there, my dad died and I didn't know it. People from church, I had been trying, they, people were praying for me, they were trying to help me, but if you're a drug addict, you always got that out. You don't want the help, you want the money. So you can go buy drugs as soon as they leave. My dad died right in the middle of the rehab and needless to say, it blew my rehab. Uh, and, and the reason it blew me up so bad was because I had stolen from him 12 years earlier because I was smoking crack. And crack will make you do things that you just you wouldn't believe. I stole from my dad, and he disowned me. And he died before I ever got to Sam Thory. In fact, I was in rehab. The very week that uh, I found out he died, uh, was I was supposed to call and make amends because that's part of the program. You got to call people you screwed over and make amends with them. Well, that didn't last. I got out and I went through seven years of deep down drug addiction. I mean, half a gram to a gram every day. I don't have any veins in my arms. Uh, 11 DWIs, like I said. And I tried to, at times I did try to be a Christian. I was trying to do it on my own strength. I didn't know I had to be reborn. I didn't know that who I was could never be somebody holy enough to come before a holy God. I mean, I was, I've learned a lot. and I spent a lot of time in the Word. And while I was locked up that last time, I read eight hours a day for a year and a half every day, and I studied. I probably read the New Testament 50, 60 times, the Old Testament six or seven, and uh I had an understanding, but I didn't have the understanding. And there's a difference I have found out. Well, 
June 6, 2019, I had had a hernia that turned into two hernias that eventually turned into three hernias. I had double hernias on both sides of my groin and one umbilical. And um, before years, seven months and four days ago. And I had to quit doing meth because I was shooting meth every day. I was into a deep, deep down meth addict. And in order to have this surgery, uh, I had to quit doing the dope. I couldn't go in high or they wouldn't do the surgery. And I knew that coming up. And the day before my surgery, I asked the Lord to, if he would take the desire to quit doing meth, that I would quit. And I uh, went and had my surgery. And Veterans Resource uh, was helping me with my rent, my electric. I was on food stand. I had indigent health care. They paid for everything. And then... When I get back about seven days into this recovery, that, uh, that antsy comes back. And when you're in that deep state of being a drug addict, you hear demons. You face, you know they're real. You, you know they are real. You hear them. And they keep you pulled down into a depth of depravity that you can't imagine unless you're there. I was there. I had grief, I had uh, remorse, uh, just, I was stranded in my soul. And they were making fun, the, the voices will make fun of you to keep you, to, you know, down. And it's like a wet blanket, a flatness that's on you when the demon gets on you. I had many. I mean, I had did things that I wouldn't tell anybody. And I don't have to worry about that now because I've been forgiven of them, but... But anyway, I heard this voice, audible or just in my head, but he said, everything's going to be all right. And something inside of me changed. Something, when no one else was there, he was there. And I was in the deepest part of me. I'd run out of me. I run out of family. I run out of friends. All I had was my dope. And I hated doing the dope. For some reason, I'd pop it right back in my arm again. But anyway, Veterans Bikers Association gave me a motorcycle. It needed a few things, and I fixed it. But I was unable to ride it because I just had surgery, so I sold it for a truck. That Dodge Durango I had when I first moved here, it was an old beat-up truck. But they got me a job working for a guy in Tyler, $10 an hour. And I was just probably three or four weeks after the triple hernia surgery, and I went to work for him. I got my rent back, rent, rent deposit back in, in Longview, where I moved from to Tyler, and I stayed at a motel where 69, and um, it's a bad part of town. I didn't know that. But yeah, I, I got a motel there and found out that the rent was 220 a week. I couldn't pay that. So I prayed about it, and I, went and bought it. I went and bought a tent. It, I bought it from Dirt Cheap. I got, gave 30 bucks for it, had a hole in it. Dave called it my holy tent. <laughs> the Fibo, yeah. But I moved out to Willow Branch out there for, and this was in middle of August, and I was there in the tent for about two weeks. A guy there, uh, his son had just bought him a brand new home in Arizona, and he had two uh, motorized, one was a motorized motor home, and another was a fifth wheel. He owner financed it to him. I paid $120 down and paid the rest of it out. God provided me a place right then. Well, the job that I was working, the guy ran out of work. And uh, the devil, you know how he starts to see? See? You just hit hey, right back to the same old stuff. And, but I knew inside that, that he didn't bring me this far to let me go. And that's when I met uh, Gordon Figueroa. Uh, Dave Kuster over here. I was having a two-story apartment built over a garage, and I finally got to meet him, got hired on the spot, and worked for him till we finished it. But October, he invited me here. It's right when y'all was having City Fest. And I uh, came to a Wednesday morning prayer meeting, met Phil Belier, Don Wilson, and Gordon, and we did the prayer meeting. And the next day, he said, you want to go eat lunch? Gordon did. 
I thought we were going to go to Sonic or something like that. We ended up going to Harvey Hall, a big buffet with waiters and these fancy tables. And, but anyway, it, it was I weighed 135 pounds when I got here. I'm now at 170. So it, it, it's been a growing process. He's delivered me. Well, it's been four years since I've touched drugs or alcohol. I, uh, I was coming here. I had quit doing I, I didn't know it was going to end up this far. All I wanted to do was quit meth. I quit meth, everything's going to be fine, but it, it didn't work out that way. I didn't know all of this was going to happen. I'm coming to church. I'm sitting there, and Brother uh, Hickey's preaching about no lone rangers in Christian. I'm, and then right after that, the Lord told me, well, you got to quit drinking. I quit drinking. What is so weird is that was in October or November, and this is before COVID even hit. A month and a half after I quit drinking alcohol, I slid, and I got drunk one night. I found an excuse to drink. I woke up the next morning with COVID. I didn't know it was COVID then because this was, this was before 2020. For two weeks there, I was, I was sick. I couldn't keep nothing down. I didn't know it was COVID. I said, okay. That's the worst feeling. I mean, that was the sickest sick I'd ever been. I got, let's see, before that, the reason he told me to quit drinking was I went to back to Longview, to a prostitute. Actually, she was free. Well, no, she was a prostitute. And uh, got drunk, drove down there drunk, had sex with her, come back drunk, and come to church Sunday. I would actually leave church and stop at the store over on the other side of the interstate and buy a six-pack or a 12-pack. I'm good to go. Hey, got no more sex, no more alcohol. Okay, so we've quit meth, we've quit alcohol, we've quit sex. Cussing, all that stuff starts leaving you. And I'm not realizing what all is going on. Y'all aren't paying no attention. We're just doing it one step at a time. And uh, then weed. I had just bought a half ounce. And I'm in church, and he says, you got to quit smoking weed. And you hear, you hear his voice. You, you know what his voice is from what you get led out of the darkness into the light with that voice right there. You know you can trust it. I see, I worked for David Cooster uh, long enough and then uh, started my own business. Uh, Faith Works by Design was the name that he gave me because that's how it works. Uh, Faith Works, and I changed everything. All of my numbers in my phone got deleted. Uh, I've got a full phone number now of, of y'all. One thing leads to another. I quit working for Dave. I've got two people working for me. I build this deck out here uh, at the Edge Building. I painted the red and yellow signs, all of them. I painted the purple wall. I redid the Edge Building, Ledge Building, uh, two or three years ago. Two. And I've probably done work for almost every elder here. Almost. But they've kept me busy. They've brought me in and encouraged me. And... Uh, at the beginning, well, in 2022, I grossed about 85 grand. That was a good year for someone who moved here in a tent. And, but I didn't, I'm like, yeah. 2023 hit. This stuff starts coming loose on me, all this mesh they put in me. All of last year, I had, what, five procedures, the mesh taken out. They took the mesh out, they tore nerves. My last surgery was three and a half weeks ago. But he provided insurance for me to pay for all of that because I started paying for it out of my pocket. You hit a $12,000 CAT scan. You, uh -uh. This was December the 14th of 2022. I was asking the Lord, how am I going to pay for all this? December 15th is the cutoff line for your this uh, Obamacare. Well, when I prayed about it, the Lord said, we'll make a video of it, of faith, that I'm going to do this for you. Said, okay. And I did. I made a video on the 14th. The very next day, I get this paper from the IRS. I've done paid my taxes. I'm like, wait a minute. And it says, we noticed you didn't have health insurance. I had health insurance before that day was over with. I made it to the January cutoff deadline. 
it's been a trying year, but I've got to spend, I lost, a, I had to sell my John Deere tractor, had to sell, I had a convertible Lexus, I had the trailer that pulled all that, and I spent every penny I had in my savings about halfway through last year. And I had a brother who's been coming by, some brothers have come by and helped me out, and one brother that's loaned me a little bit against my settlement because I started a lawsuit on this stuff three years ago. It's going to pay off in the end, but whew, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. But they rebuilt my stomach walls and the mesh is gone. I don't have any more of that crap in me. Um, but it's been a, this past year, it's been a lot of time, downtime, with no one around to talk to because at first, it kind of hit me hard when I had to let my John Deere tractor go. Because, you know, you, 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 God's built you up. But then I realized He gave me all of that in 2022 to pull me through 2023. I still have everything I need to go back in the business, you know, once I get, it's going to be another week and a half before I get back to work. But everything that I need, He's provided. I had a roof, food. I've not missed any meals. My, I got two pigs, two cats, two dogs. And I had to take care of them. That keeps me busy. I've come to realize that he's real. I mean, once you realize that he's real and that you have his Holy Spirit in you, you start wanting to know all of the basics of it. So you start digging in deeper. And you start seeing that uh, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. I now know what that means. I now know what that means. I'm not held down by a bunch of demons telling me a bunch of lies about something that once I was realized who I was in Christ and that Christ's work on the cross completes me whenever he comes in. It's done with. I don't struggle with those voices anymore because the one I listen to is the one I keep my eyes focused on now. It's a big difference. I quit listening to anything music except Christian music I don't watch any kind of craziness on TV. I don't let my eyes see things that offend my eye. Rather than plucking my eye out, I just pluck the TV out, you know. <laughs> but uh, once you receive the Holy Spirit, you're able to, well, with what love God gave us when he gave us Jesus is the love that I receive and we all receive. And that's the love that enables me to love others. Because before I had him, I couldn't love anybody. I didn't even love myself. How can I love my neighbor as I love myself if I don't love myself? So, let's see. My redemption, my justification, my adoption, my sanctification is in Christ. This born-again rebirth into the righteousness of Christ is a miracle gift of grace given to me, and it comes from the Father above through the work of Christ on the cross. And the miracle gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The reason that I needed this supernatural work to make me holy before God is because I was unholy. Paul in 724 Romans, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? How was I, an unholy person, ever going to make myself holy? How could I ever begin to express holiness? And how was I, unholy and guilty, from whom every inclination was toward sin all the time? All of a sudden, find it in myself to even desire holiness, let alone move toward holiness, and then to come before a most holy God. Paul's answer to my spiritual dilemma, a wretched man that I am, who would save me from this body of death, is in the verse right after his question. I thank God through and in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This miracle of holiness, the miracle of being born again, has to be alien. It has to come from outside of me. I had to be redeemed. I had to be justified and done so supernaturally. So that sanctification through the work of Christ, through the receiving of the spirit of holiness, the indwelling Holy Spirit, so that I could be changed from who I was and who I become through the favor and grace of God. You see, that's the only way that I could ever even think holiness and to be holy, let alone do anything that would be acceptable before a perfect, holy, and righteous God. This redemption, this justification, 
through and in Christ and his work on the cross is necessary. God had to make him who knew no sin to become sin for me so that I might become the righteousness of God in him. To be spiritually joined to the risen spirit of Christ is what it means for me to be spiritually reborn in Christ. For in him are all the promises, yes and amen. And unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All the years I tried to serve and be a Christian, it was all for nothing until I received the Spirit. And then once you receive the Spirit, once I receive the Spirit, things change. Your eyes see things different. You know that people care and uh, encourage you. Had it not been to, for the men's breakfast and every one of the guys at the prayer, Clint, the people that uh, feel who's driven me to these surgeries, uh, encouraged me the whole year because there was times I still read and prayed, but you, you lose that get up and go because you got nowhere to go. And you're unable to get up and move around because you hurt so bad. But uh, after Terry and Phil Blair come by, you need to come back to church because I quit going to Sundays and Wednesday morning prayer meetings. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And then after they got, I got to think, after they left, I got to thinking. And then the Lord said, you're going to hurt here. You might as well go to church and hurt there. <laughs> so that's what I did. I wouldn't take anything for this last year. When, when I got to settle down, because when I'm working, I also buy and sell cars. I, and, and I think I've had 30, 40 Mercedes, Lexus, uh, Audis, trucks, cars, boats, campers, four-wheelers, motorcycles. And I've got to start all of that over again. But I was so busy, I didn't have but nothing but a certain amount of time to spend with the Lord every morning. Because I got a crew to run, I got jobs to do. Go, 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 go. Uh, he stopped me. He sat me down. And, and I wouldn't change, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I repeat that often. I'm going to repeat that often. But that's pretty much it. You know, I was sitting over here, Lee, and thinking, okay, how do we end this? And I just said, Lord, what do you want Lee to know? And here's what he laid on my heart. He says, I'm proud of you, Lee. You're my son, and I love you. And we love you, too. Thank you. Thank you.